So in today's video, we're taking a look at Metis DAO. This is an L2 scaling solution for Ethereum and one I think can actually capture a lot of value from the L1 onto the L2 uh, with whales and alike moving a lot of their behavior over onto L2 over the next few years. I think this is a trend we're going to see and I want to be part of that narrative. So the L2 hype train is a real one. I think this is a good narrative in the crypto market to be a part of. And thus, let's have a little look at these L2s, starting with Metis here. So Metis market cap is $132 million. Circulating supply, 4.3 million out of a 10 mil max supply. We're going to go into the tokenomics towards the end of this one, but they are rather good, uh, as most tokens are actually distributed uh, by summer of next year, so around July 2023. Now, this is an optimistic roll-up. It's actually a fork of optimism, but they've made a load of improvements, focusing primarily on decentralization as the main core concept, plus a few other things that we'll touch on in today's video. But essentially, this is the L2 itself. It's called Metis Andromeda. Uh, at this moment in time, they have a load of partners on here. So these may be individual new projects that have just built directly onto Metis, uh, but some of these as well, as you'll see from some of the names, you're probably recognizing them, uh, they've built on top or with uh, Metis as an additional chain. So I think this is a trend we're going to see in the future. They're also going to be onboarding Aave and Link very soon. Those are going to be DeFi building blocks and I think Lego pieces that will inevitably cause a lot more things to be built out on here. So I do expect a bit of an explosion over the bear market of the amount of ecosystem partners here for Metis building on Andromeda. So what do we know about ETH L2 rollups? Well, these are better than using alt L1s technically, as you don't sacrifice the security of Ethereum as the L1, you're utilizing that to batch up transactions, roll them up, and then send them back to the L1 at a given point in time. So they kind of batch up transactions and then send them over. We'll discuss that in just a sec. So this is why it's a lot more palatable to use an L2 for any ETH maxi than going absolutely anywhere else. So on their main website, the Ethereum L2 roll-up platform, dApps, DAOs, NFTs, and people is what builds up the Web3 economy, they state. And for this, we need a low gas fee environment with fast transactions, also with native storage, IPFS integration, high security, simple implementation, all on Ethereum and all decentralized, as they say, only with Metis. So there's some trade-offs with other L2s out there. There is a nice compare and contrast chart I'm going to show. Uh, but essentially, I think this is one of the best looking L2s out there right now. And it does tick a load of boxes. So let's jump into this thread here, probably the best thread that I read on Metis over the last few days. This is by King Fire Mond. And from this, he starts to talk about the costliness of Ethereum gas fees. So back here in April, you could pay like 18, 90 bucks for an ETH gas fee, and that was just outrageous. So he says, how can this be mass adopted by institutions or companies alike? It's too inefficient and too expensive. But this is where the L2 role comes into play. And so we need to provide a solution with speed, scalability, and low cost. Metis to the rescue, he says. So utilizing optimistic rollups, these effectively scale the network. Optimistic rollups process transactions on layer two and bundle the transactions and send them over to layer one Ethereum. So you can see bundling of transactions and then rolling up and sending back to Ethereum to the main chain. And thus you have the security of the main chain whilst being highly scalable. You can process a load of transactions here on the rollup. So Metis here and not every individual transaction is going to be immediately executed over on ETH. We're rolling them up, getting a batch together and then submit into ETH the main L1. So you can kind of see from the diagram there how that works. And this allows up to 100x increased scalability. But in terms of security, are there any trade-offs? Well, he says, if a transaction is disputed, the roll-up will execute a fraud proof in order to ensure the validity of the transaction. Downside is these transactions take days to execute as they can be challenged. An example here is on Arbitrum, withdrawals back to Ethereum can take up to a week due to these fraud proofs, but not with Metis. So Metis utilizes multiple sequencers that are pulled into on-chain entities called decentralized autonomous companies, DACs. You obviously heard of DAOs. DACs may be something new to you. These were first mentioned publicly by a 2014 paper from Vitalik Buterin. More on his link to the project or his mum in a later section but essentially in each block a new sequencer will be randomly selected to push any state changes back to ETH i.e that roll-up diagram we just looked at allowing for extreme speed and decentralization so sequencers must stake more mates 
than the dynamic bond threshold, disincentivizing malicious behavior. So this is where some of the crypto economics work here. You've got to actually stake a load of Metis tokens to be a sequencer. And if you are a bad sequencer, you will be slashed by the nicely named rangers here who actually do the policing over the sequencers, validating their actions and in return, potentially receiving Metis rewards. So you have the crypto economics here. If the sequencer is found guilty, their stakes can be slashed and the ranger receives the slashed assets. If the ranger doesn't perform as well, he can be booted from the network. As a result, L2 to L1 transactions take a much shorter time to execute with no room for error. So now let's jump into what are DAX exactly. So unlike a DAO, a decentralized autonomous organization, a DAC allows for companies to launch their services on chain. So essentially, what they want to do is be that bridging point to get web 2 companies into web 3 with pretty much a one-click solution to do so and each DAC will have its own MVM Metis virtual machine you've heard of the Ethereum virtual machine you set up a DAC you'll run your own MVM here and as the number of DACs grows scalability and speed increases this is due to the fact each DAC does its own computation and has its own storage layer and in terms of storage layers down here they have integrated with IPFS the likes of Optimism have not done so and I think this is very important for file storage but specifically bigger files maybe the likes of NFTs as an example here and I think what you could see is you know a lot of NFTs starting to mint out on Matis and then bridge back to ETH and thus you have all the file storage here on Matis which will be a whole lot cheaper I hear it costs a small fortune to actually launch an NFT collection on Ethereum and so as this diagram shows having separate computing and data storage makes things a lot more efficient but also more privacy privacy concerns will be a reason why people want to use this l2 i believe furthermore he goes on to the fact there's no bridging fee to ethereum from metis you just have to pay the eth gas costs and furthermore the higher the dac economic activity the more metis is needed to be staked so if economic activity is very valuable maybe millions of dollars you need to have the sequencers staking millions of dollars of meters in order for them to be allowed to batch transactions and send them back to the ETH L1. So the crypto economics behind it seem very, very tantalizing here. They've also got a $100 million grant coming up. We'll jump into in just a sec. But what are the token utilities? Obviously, transaction fees, as we know, with any layer one or L2, the token is utilized for transaction fees. They're going to be very low. So that's not a huge driver of a value, but it is one indeed. Then we have initial DAC creation. You must stake Metis for VE Metis in order to launch your own MVM and become a sequencer. And DACs and Rangers are rewarded in the Metis token for their contribution and validation of the network. So a bit of a circuit economy being built out there with Metis in the backbone here we can see from L2 fees this was a bit of an old one but it's highly comparable to other L2s on the network it is one of the cheaper ones cheaper in terms of swapping the tokens than that of the likes of Loopring and very much comparable to that of Optimism and Arbitrum at current network usage rates so reason to be bullish right now so they have a DAC a decentralized autonomous company here called Genesi and this one is actually headed up by Natalia Ameline and this is Vitalik's mother as you may have heard with Metis Vitalik's mum's chain this is where that banter comes from and they have a VC investor group and she is kind of leading up the team for this and vetting all the products and services that want to launch on top of Metis and get their hands on some of this 100 million dollar fund so in a way she's almost like a gatekeeper for this fund so essentially what you've got is a market cap of maybe 130 mil but a VC arm ready to deploy up to $100 million to build on top of Metis. That is kind of bullish in my opinion and shows you that there is VCs out there who are really betting on the fact Metis can be a leader in the L2 space. So this DAC is directly going to help support ecosystem development, not with just money, marketing, advice, etc., etc. And I think that this will actually help to, you know, bolster the amount of offerings, DeFi, NFT, games, etc., over on Metis over time. They've recently funded a new metaverse protocol called Tristan. Then we have this Metis build a mining program. So this is a very unique thing that I haven't seen on any other chain. This incentivizes ecosystem partners to build on top of Metis Andromeda due to the fact they are going to rebate 30% of all network fees back to the dApps in proportion to what the dApps 
actually get transaction volume wise. So as an example, if you have a thousand metis collected from gas fees in say a week, 30% of those metis tokens, so 300 in this example, will be distributed back to the projects. So if you account for say 10% of all transaction volume on metis, you're going to get 30 metis tokens. This is a way of ensuring dApps want to come and build, ensuring they have a revenue stream if they are successful, and a way to utilize gas fees that is boosting the whole overall ecosystem and not just lining the pockets of those validating the transactions. So this does, in my opinion, give it a incentive system and a unique selling proposition that I haven't seen with any other L1 or L2 out there right now. So a very innovative way of utilizing those gas costs. So if you're tantalized by the prospects of Metis here, they have released their second half year roadmap ahead for 2022. Where they talk more about their DAX reputation power, which is going to be very interesting for DAX and how this helps govern the network. If you're a good player, you'll receive more reputation power and how they're coining this phrase here, a smart L2 to make it even more scalable and decentralized as the year progresses. I'll leave this in the description down below for you to go and check out, but I will cover more of this as time progresses, so do ensure you subscribe. Now in terms of the L2 wars, we have a bit of a compare and contrast between Metis, Optimism and Arbitrum here. So of course, all of them are optimistic rollups, but interestingly enough here, you can see the different sequences. There's a pool of sequences for Metis. This makes it more decentralized. Whereas on Optimism, there is just one single sequencer. So you have a single point of failure. The staking scheme is a lot more dynamic and pegged to the economic value of transactions. So as transactions and their value go up, the amount being staked must also go up as well. So this gives a positive feedback loop for the tokenomics, whereas on Optimism, it's static and user determined over on Arbitrum. Validation time just hours on Metis. On Optimism, up to seven days in Arbitrum days. And then in terms of decentralized storage integration, there is none for Arbitrum or Optimism, but IPFS has been integrated here for Metis. As I mentioned, this could be a very important factor as well. So I do believe it takes a lot of boxes here, but let's have a little look at the tokenomics and the emission schedule here. So the kind of when to accumulate. Well, as we've seen over on CoinGecko, around 43.5%, 4.35 million tokens are in existence and currently circulating, but 10 mil is the max supply, so quite a bit of inflation yet to come. But even during this period of high inflation, it managed to top over 300 bucks in the peak of the bull market, 314 or even 323 as mentioned down here uh, on the all time. But this shows you this has the ingredients to seriously pump. And as they're building more and more, this is gonna be a better fundamental protocol than what it was during this period of over exuberance and irrational behavior in the market in the last bull market. So let's look at the supply schedule here. You have these quarterly increases here, this yellow line, for example, here, the pink line, the blue line, where we have some tokens being released to various partners, advisors, team, and a lot of transaction mining rewards as well, which are kind of the network emissions. But that really tapers off from here, which is around the second week of July in 2023. And from there, we just have an emissions curve for the transaction mining that will take a further eight years to actually hit the max supply there of 10 million tokens. So on the emission schedule, we can see we are vesting up to year two for the founding team members, up to year two for the advisors, and up to two years for community development development and then those ongoing commissions as shown by this yellow line at the top. So this goes to say that there are, you know, frequent drops here every three months on a quarterly basis, you're getting emissions of tokens. So the next one coming around October 6th, advisors, the team, Metaslab Foundation, they all get a chunk of tokens released. You can see from the total at the bottom, we're gonna go from roughly 5.4 million tokens. And then by the time we hit the summer of 2023, we get up to 7 million tokens emitted. And from there on out, it's pretty much smoother sailing with the transaction mining making up the sole bulk of further emissions to this protocol. So this goes to say, that what we're going to see is the majority of the maximum supply being emitted out over the next 12 months odd and then after that the emissions literally drop off a cliff and then that is where we're going to have less available coins to entities that could potentially dump and going into the next bull market when we do get this next phase of irrational exuberance in the market this one will have superb tokenomics ready to really capture a ton of that value so i do believe that the all-time highs we saw for meters token 
back in January of 2022 will be eclipsed in the next bull market as the L2 narrative and the tokenomics and what we can see here, they're going to be building something seriously special. So this is one certainly on the DCA list. Watch out for those token unlocks. You do not want to buy this one just prior to an unlock occurring. So stay up to date with all of that. I'll drop some information down below and we will update close to the time when those emissions are about to hit. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please subscribe to the channel. See you in the next one. Goodbye.